Hey guys, what y'all know about um, glass enclosures and new tubs and showers? I'm, I'm afraid I don't want to spend $15,000, but we got somebody coming over today. I look really bad. This is what I look like when I get up in the morning. Anyway, I want to um, find out about it because my husband's 6'7", and his head is way above the shower. He has to dip down. And plus the shower door's not working right. And then we have another one that's just a small bathtub and a shower. So we're going to see about getting that fixed. It says, has anybody ever done it? And has anybody ever had a good job? I don't know. I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking, got to do something. It's kind of boring. Looking at the ceiling, looking at the ceiling, looking at the lights, looking at the TV and whatever. I'm just kind of bored. Yeah, I could be crazy. I could be nuts. I don't know. Do people feel like this? Hey, cat. Quick wee. What you doing over there? Hey, washing up, little baby girl. Just really don't. I'm kind of bored. I'm almost 78, and we don't do. Just kind of want to do things. There's. I got three boxes there of things that came in the UPS and Amazon, and my kitchen's clean. I mean, what do I do? I mowed the lawn yesterday. The house is clean. My bed is made. I'm too old to get out and work, make money, I mean. I just don't know. Hey, honey, what are you doing for excitement? Well, I'm going to pay you for all your services. I got a dollar. Hey, what was that for? It was on the floor in the laundry room. It was on the floor in the laundry room. I made a dollar. Okay, that picks up my day. I didn't know what to do. Now I got a dollar. <laughs> you buy half a Coke. I didn't get a half a Coke, but I can't have Coke. I'm on Ozempic. Ozempic. Ozempic works pretty good. I'm 188, almost 187, and I started at 226 last summer, but I didn't really diet. I was down to 115 when I started the Ozempic. Not 115, 215. 115, I'd be nice and slim with a lot of hanging skin. Whew. That's the bad thing. I lose this weight, but then the skin's hanging all over the place, and Gosh, I got to get a haircut today. I don't, this is not good. I I don't know why I have to have all that skin hanging. It doesn't look good. Um, jiggles. I can, like, learn how to fly with it, I guess. That's probably what, maybe it needs some kind of stick or something to hold it up. And I got fat legs, and but I got some strange outfit on. No, I bought these pajamas like in February before I ever went on this diet. Why I bought size 2X, I don't know, but I think a couple of us could get in here together. But um, I didn't really need 2X, but I got 2X because they were comfortable. I was really a 1X. But now I'm a uh, a 16 comfortably, and I can get into a 14, but it's not comfortable. So I'm just going to stick with my 16s right now. But So I went from 1X to 16. That's pretty good in three months. And um, 217 to 1... What did I say I was? 187? 188, almost 187. <laughs> Doesn't seem like anything to brag about being 187, but I guess when you were 240 when you had your last baby, 187 sounds good. 240 is the most I ever weighed, but I had a 10 pound baby. And that was strange because after I had the baby, I went out in the hallway and weighed myself. And I started crying, and a nurse came by, and she said, Honey, why are you crying? And I said, 
because I weighed a 240 and I had a 10 pound baby and I'm still 240. <laughs> she said I have had um, two IVs in me because I had hemorrhaged and um, there was something in there to hold hold the water so I would get get my body back to where it needed to be. <clears throat> so it wasn't allowing me to lose any weight right then. But of course I lost it. It went down to 108. That's 108. However you can do an 8, I don't know. But I really weighed 108 for a while. I stayed around 108 to 115 to 20 for years. My adult years. And then I got up to maybe 140. I stayed there for a while. And then I was like when I was working with my, um, with the lawyers, I was well, about 150, I guess. Five, five, 150. It wasn't too bad. I was chunky, cause I have a small um, build. I don't. I can't claim large bones. I have a small build. But um, after I retired, 160, 170. 180, 190. I was 199 when I went in for my pacemaker. And I went down to 198. And then the next thing I knew, I was 208, 215, 216, 220, 226. That's a whole lot. And when you have a pacemaker, I'm, I'm guessing that's something wrong with my heart. I try to deny it, but my kids left. They said, geez, Mom, you got a pacemaker. That's a heart problem. <laughs> what it was is my heart um, was beating real slow. It was beating anywhere between 35 and 45 beats a minute. Um, and the funny thing is I was going to, to the um, gym every day. And I read on my Fitbit that if you have a low heartbeat, it means that you're athletic. And I thought, I'm athletic. <laughs> and uh, I just thought, hey, I'm in good shape. I got, I got a low heartbeat. But I was kind of having a hard time breathing. And I had a pool back then, and I'd try to walk back from the pool, and I was having a hard time, hard time coming up that walk. And my son was behind me one day. He said, "Jeez, Mom, you don't you you're not even getting any air. You're not walking very good." But I didn't pay attention. We decided to take the great granddaughters on a cruise, so we took them on the Oasis, which is a very large ship. And uh, we took them for a week. And as that week went on, it got harder and harder to walk that ship. It is a big ship. And we got to where our, we take our kids and our grandkids, and they just kind of go off on their own. And my grandkids are just a little bit older than my great-grandkids, a couple of years older. And, um, I mean, they've been on their own since they were like six, seven years old. We could let them go. But we made them stay on a certain deck, you know, the, the deck with the pools. We didn't let them just, they weren't allowed to go on the escalator or, you know, go down to another floor. And we did kind of follow them around. We saw that they were safe. But anyway, the, the great-grandkids didn't want to go. And we kept saying, gosh, we'd just like to have a little nap. And they wouldn't. They'd, they'd go off for a couple of minutes, come back and say, we want to go on the zip line, but you have to have an adult. So um, I'd trudge out there and help them on the disc. I'd have to sign for everything. And we had a wonderful time with them. It was a great trip. but. It was just getting kind of hard for me to get around. But um, we, we went from Sunday to Sunday. And that following Wednesday, I was supposed to go in and have a colonoscopy, which, woo woo, I had a bunch of them, but I, I've done fine on them. I think I had um, polyps one time. But you, you know, you really need to keep up on that. So. They, you're not supposed to eat after like Tuesday at midnight. Well, I wanted to be real clean and not have any problems at all. So 
I got real smart and I didn't eat anything on Tuesday morning. I ate breakfast. That's all I ate. So Wednesday comes and I go to the hospital and go through all the prep and they're getting ready to, to take me in for my colonoscopy. And the doctor comes in and says, I'm sorry, but you can't have a colonoscopy today. And I said, what? I drank all that stuff and I haven't eaten since Tuesday. And this, this was Thursday, actually. Was it Thursday? Yeah, it was Thursday. Because I didn't eat all day Tuesday. No, it was Wednesday. I'm sorry. It's been a while. It was Wednesday afternoon. He said, no, we've got to do some tests on you. We think you're going to have to have a pacemaker. I said, what? I came in for, for a um, colonoscopy. You want to give me a pacemaker? That's not even the correct end. And he said, well, my, um, my hearts per minute were, um, heartbeats per minute were slow. And I said, well, because I'm an athlete. <laughs> I know they thought that was the funniest thing. I'm an athlete. I'm a 200-pound athlete. At five foot three, I've shrunk two inches. So they um, put me in an ambulance and they sent me to the hospital. I was already in a hospital, but they sent me to the downtown hospital. Well, they messed around on t on Wednesday doing tests, and they then Thursday they sent me down for um, what was that? Not a night. It was a that test where it looks real pretty, they look in your heart and you can see all that. Not an echocardiogram, some, some kind of cardiogram. Anyway, I had that, they took me down, it was real far, all the way to the end of the, of the other hospital, of the hospital, the other end of the hospital. And I had to wait for somebody to come push me back in the wheelchair. Well, I felt fine, so I just, got out of, the hot, out of the wheelchair and I pushed it and I walked a long way. I remember I had gone up some elevators and gone down some halls and I stopped at a couple of the nurses stations and asked how to get to my room number because I knew the room number and they just said oh it's down here and then you turn right and go up the escalator and it'll be the next one. So I got back to my room and nobody really questioned that I had been gone. I don't know if that guy was still out there looking for me or not. <laughs> anyway, another whole day came. And they still wanted to do more tests. And they did an EKG. And they did a, a, a whatever on my brain and everything else. It ends up Friday night. Now, I haven't eaten anything since Tuesday morning. And I realize I'm pretty chubby. But that's a long time to go without food. And every time I'd say, I'm hungry, they'd say, well, you have to have tests and you have to have an empty stomach. Well, by Friday, I was really starved and I was getting mad. I said, I want some food. Well, finally, 7 o'clock at night, this fat doctor, I mean, he was really fat. He was like a ball. He was my surgeon. And he had been doing surgery since 7 in the morning. And this is 7 at night. So here I am starving and I got this fat guy coming in that's going to operate on my heart and the guy's got to be t really tired all that weight on those teeny little feet I was not in a good mood but next thing I knew they put me under and I lived I lived through it but I kept telling them, I want food. I better have food. Well, it was like 10.30, and they said, the cafeteria is closed. And I said, I want food. They brought me two big turkey sandwiches, and I just shoved them in. I mean, I was so hungry. I mean, that was a long time, a long, long time to go without food. And then um, the next morning, they... Uh, sent me home but then when they were sent me home they told me that the guy was going to come with a with a wheelchair my husband went downstairs he's in his car waiting nobody comes nobody comes. I'm waiting a half an hour I want to get the heck home 
I just picked up my little suitcase and I walked my little butt to the elevator and went down, went outside, got in the car and left. Nobody, and nobody ever checked me out or anything. Okay, now that's a long story, but it's going to get a little longer because the next week, the doctor, I had to go in for my checkup and he gave me some pills. Well, he didn't give them to me. He gave me a prescription. He said, you take these pills. This is the fat doctor. So I went home. I got the prescription filled and... I already did it. Alexa, I did it already. She wants me to do my Wordle. Oh, Alexa, I did my Wordle already. <laughs> Alexa runs my household pretty much. She's not going to shut up. Oh, gosh, shut up. Anyway, so I looked at the package where it tells what could happen to you and you know you you could die from an aspirin I know that but the very first warning was you could die from this I can't remember what the name of the pill was it was a very large pill and I called my doctor and I said I don't think I want to take this because it's um it it says that it could kill you I forgot to tell you when that when that doctor told me I needed um the fat doctor told me I needed a pacemaker. I said, can I go home and think about this? He said, go home and die. I thought, what the heck? It made me cry and everything. I thought, what kind of a doctor would tell you to go home and die? So I did, I did consent to the surgery. Okay, so I'm back, I'm back now to the pill from the same fat doctor. So uh, he told me I had to take the pill. So I took the pill and went to bed. Well, something woke me up in the nighttime, and I heard this terrible noise, and I'm laying in bed, and I couldn't figure out what it was, but I knew I couldn't breathe very well. So I got up, and I went into, on my recliner, where I am right now, in the kitchen. I was staying in that back bedroom back there, because my husband's bed, bedroom is there, and I, I was afraid if he needed me in the night, I, I needed him to be right there, or if I needed him. <laughs> Anyway, I realized that I was wheezing. I don't wheeze. <coughs> if I'm breathing at all, I've got good breath. So I just came and I got up. Well, my husband heard me and he came in and sat there and I'm going, ee, ee. and he said, I think we need to call the doctor. I didn't want to do it, but I called. And of course it was the nighttime answering service but they called a doctor and he told me to get to the hospital right away and I said well do I need to go to the Pell City Hospital or should I go all the way to Birmingham he said just get to the closest hospital so we get in we drive to the hospital they look at me for about two minutes and they call an ambulance I didn't want to take an ambulance. It cost me a whole lot of money, like $250. I can drive, or my husband can drive, but um, they stick me in the ambulance, and I had to go to the bathroom and everything, and they said I couldn't go to the bathroom in the ambulance. We get all the way down to Birmingham, and I had been complaining about going to the bathroom. They stopped it right inside the, the uh, hospital, took me off the stretcher, let me walk in, go to the bathroom and then get back on the stretcher. It's just, I mean, it's crazy what they do. You know, it it really is. It's just a job to them. Anyway, they rushed me upstairs. This was on, what day was that, Phil? That second time? I think that was like on a, that was like on a Tuesday. Yeah, that was Tuesday. The first time I went in on Wednesday. This time was Tuesday. Well, they did those same old tests. And they tested, and they tested every day, and I couldn't eat. There I am again. I went from from Tuesday again. Now, well, I ate on Tuesday. But I went all the way to Friday again. I guess they like to do their jobs on Friday. I don't know. They finally, they come in and they tell me, well, the same fat doctor says, you're going to have to have 
some stints put in. I said, stints? I said, you just gave me a pacemaker. Why didn't you do all that at the same time? We didn't know we had the problem. And then he says, I said, can I, can I think about this a little bit? He didn't let me think about the other one. He said, go on home, think about it, and die. I, this is two times he's told me to die. Well, I was mighty pissed. Plus, then he tells me, I'm going on vacation, so I'm not going to do it anyway, but i got a girl that'll do it. She works with me, and she's a real good doctor. And I thought, oh, God, now i got to get somebody else. Well, the sweetest, nicest girl comes in. I mean, she is a girl compared to me, but I guess she's in her 40s. She is very sweet. She said, I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about it. And I said, well, I'm really, really hungry. <laughs> And all these people, they can think, they see this fat woman and all she talks about is eating, but they don't realize it's been four more days since I ate. Go in the hospital and starve. That's what's going to happen. Don't go in the hospital. There's no food. And if there is food, it's not really good. Anyway, so by the time they wheel me down in there, I'm really starving. And they're pushing me along. This man, I guess he's an orderly, he's pushing me down through these through this hallway, and I'm I'm wide awake, and I'm seeing all these doors go by, and um, I said, well, I can't wait till I'm put to sleep because I'm kind of tired, and then when I wake up, I'll have food. And he said, oh, you're not going to be put to sleep. I said, what? He said, no, you have to help her. I said, help her? I'm paying her. I'm not helping anybody, and I start trying to get out of that bed. And he's trying to keep me out of the bed, but I'm looking at every door going by, and I'm looking. I got my feet over the side of the stretcher, and I'm going to jump into one of those rooms because I'm not going to be awake for anything. I don't care what they do when I'm sleeping, but I am not having anything done besides my teeth cleaning awake. Well, my doctor, she's in this glass room, and she sees what's going on. She comes running up the hall. And out of, I'm halfway out of the bed. She jumps on top of me. She lays me down, and she keeps assuring me that she's going to take good care of me. She said, honey, I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about it. You're not going to feel a thing. You're going to, I'm going to put you to sleep. I said, he said I'm not going to go to sleep. She said, don't listen to him. He's just pushing us. He pushed us into the emergency, well, into the um, operating room. And she said, you are not going to feel or know anything. I'm going to put you to sleep. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And um, so I got in there, and she went over to get all her prep done, and two guys come over, and they realize I've got my underpants on, and they said, you got to take your underpants off. I said, they're not working on that area. They're working on my arm. That's why I liked it, because she was going through my wrist. And everybody else wants to go through your crotch, and I didn't want my crotch. But she, she's got teeny tiny little hands, and she, she could do that. So she, um, they insisted I had to take my pants off. So here I am, two black orderlies, and they're men, and I'm pulling my pants off on this stretcher. And there I am, and they said, that's far enough. I got them down to my knees. I mean, this is like... Just stupid. I don't like taking off my clothes, and I don't think anybody does, and I sure as heck don't want to be all these glass windows. Anyway, they, they stayed their ground, and she came in, and she told me to look up at the ceiling. Next thing I woke up, and I could feel, but it didn't hurt, I could feel her pull some kind of long thing out of my arm. And she put a pretty little bracelet on my wrist. It's kind of neat. It looked like, um, it kind of looked pearly. And they wheeled me to a tiny little room. She said I had to spend the night there. But I reminded them, I'm sure that they were reminded anyway, that I'm hungry. So I got two more turkey sandwiches. And I have to say that Medical Center downtown St. Saint, Saint Vincent's, <coughs> downtown Birmingham has the best turkey sandwiches in the world because I had four of them. Four turkey sandwiches in two weeks. They're very good, especially when you're starving. 
but um, that was so much better than the pacemaker, and the pacemaker really wasn't that bad. I just had, it's right here. You can see that little line. I just had a little patch. They did a good job, it's just that he was such an ass. I'm, I know he's a very good doctor, I'm not gonna say his name, but he looks like a ball and he's an ass. He's a ball ass. <laughs> but um, he is a good doctor. But I really love her. And her name is Hunter. And if you need anything done to your heart, get her. She's very good. She's, she's very sweet. She's compassionate. But she's a real good doctor. Anyway, that's, that's a long story. But I thought you might like to know a little bit more about me. And believe me, I'm going to go get my hair cut, I think, today. I got somebody coming to give us a price about um, a new, a new uh, bathroom. After that, I'm going to go get either a haircut or I'm going to get my toesies done. But I think the haircut needs it more. It's so frizzy because it's so humid. But um, it's a little long. I get a lot of flack from my cousins. They all had beautiful long hair. Now they think they need to have short hair. But I look ugly in short hair. Look, uh, I'm going to have hair like this. It's going to be ugly either way. But I don't know. My bangs, I do them myself. I don't, I don't have much hair anymore because I'm old and then the Ozempic. Wow, that's, that's really looking good. So I'm a 78, 77 year old woman. I guess when I turn 78, I'll have to be more mature. <laughs> Do you think I'm mature, honey? Yes. He said, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's 25 minutes of 26 minutes of my bullshit, but I just thought maybe you'd like to know me a little bit better. I'm in my jammies. I'm in my jammies. My jam. I'm in my jams. Our grandkids are staying with us um, until they get everything going on their house. And um, and my daughter got a um, offer on her house today. So. Everybody's moving away from me, and I'm just going to be here all by myself and my husband. All by myself, don't want to be. All by myself, in misery. Okay, that's one song that I don't know, but I got my dollar. See you later. Bye-bye, guys.